Ron Alpbach uh, is uh, one of these rare people who, as a child, would get up in the morning and, and practice his piano for hours and hours and in. But uh, notwithstanding his classical training and his love for classical music, he's also one of the greatest uh, boogie woogie and rock and roll piano players there is. Also sings a good uh, little bit and is, has collaborated with us on arrangements and is, is just a hard working guy in, in terms of production and producing. Lille Joyeuse at Debussy. It was uh, a long time ago. I was in Paris and went there first in 1967 in the summertime to study with Nadia Boulanger. And uh, during that summer, I was sick. I had bronchitis or something. I, I, I wasn't able to play very much. <clears throat> and then right at the end of the school, at the end of the, uh, the summer, I was in a, a student recital. And I played this Lille Joyeuse. That's why I'm playing it now. And uh, Mademoiselle Boulanger came up to me after the concert, and I really didn't play it very well. I didn't think I made mistakes, and I wasn't real happy with it. But she came up afterward and said, uh, oh, but my dear, how musical, and asked me if I'd stay and study with her. And so I did. After about, I think I was there three years or so, and then, and then uh, the call of rock and roll started to be a little bit louder and louder and louder. Every day it started to nag at me. In college, I played a lot of rock and roll. I was with the, my old college buddies, and we had this band, King Harvest, and um, we, we were recording. And it was a very strange thing in Paris. We used, what we used to do, we had, uh, whenever we needed money, we'd record an album under, di under, under different names for different companies. I suppose I shouldn't talk about it. But we, we'd record, uh, like we recorded a country western album under the name of E. Rodney Jones and the Prairie Dogs, and we recorded, a, uh, we recorded another album under the name of... Uh, the, the Silent Night and the Bagman. We recorded some uh, a, a film score for a for a French movie. Actually, the French movie was called Le Feu, Feu Sacré, and it, it represented France in the uh, Cannes Festival in 71, 71. Anyway, so we were there, and some guy said, "Okay, look, we needed the rent for our house, see? So we needed an, we had to do another album." And the guy said, "Okay, why don't you record Dancing in the Moonlight?" So we said, "Fine, we'll record Dancing in the Moonlight." It was a song written by another friend of ours, Sherman Kelly, uh, "Dancing in the Moonlight." Little, wait, little cute intro. We get it. Uh, you know how it goes. I'm not much of a singer, but it's uh, dancing in the moonlight, dancing in the moonlight. Everybody feeling warm and bright. It's a very pretty song. Not the way I sing it particularly, but. It, People liked it because it was the number one song. And then uh, I was in New York one day, and I, I, uh, I got a phone call. For, I was just about to sit down and meditate in my room, this terrible little hotel. And I, I met some girls that afternoon who were involved in the teaching Transcendental Meditation. And they were kind of cute, you know. And uh, I got a phone call that, that evening, and it, it, the guy says, Hello, Altbach? I said, Yeah. He said, This is Mike Love. He says, You're in my territory. So it uh, turns out that he considered himself to be the king of all the women around New York City and that nobody else had a right to even talk to anybody. So he came up and we meditated together and we went out to eat. We became real good friends quite quickly. And then I started playing with the Beach Boys not too much after that, a couple of years after that, I guess a year after that. And um, one of the other fellows in the Beach Boys, Alan Jardine, and I became really, really quite close friends. And, uh, he used to like to sit around and listen to me play. He and his wife, Linda, beautiful, wonderful girl, used to sit around and listen to me play classical music. It was actually quite nice on the road when we were touring with the Beach Boys. We'd be in uh, hotel rooms or something, and I'd, have a, I'd always get a, a piano, if I could, brought to my hotel room. And then I'd sit and play little concerts in the evening for the guys. And um, I, they, they used to be, I used to play the, the Italian concerto. Uh, Great piece of music. Anyway, that was one of the favorites. I'd always ask for that one. 
One day I was up at Big Sur with Alan, and, uh, and he, 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 I was playing some Bach on his piano there, and I, I started playing one of the, the uh, chorale preludes, uh, Jesu, Pride of Man's Desire, Joy of Man's Desire. I, I never remember, but it, you know, everybody knows it. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's heard that. And uh, anyway, I had the idea to... to I started playing, you know, I started playing a little different, little different rhythm, you know. And, he, and Alan uh, said, well, let's hear it. We sat around all afternoon, I was just kind of pounding the piano. And I finished, he'd say, play it again. He started humming, he started singing, he running around the room. He said, let's make a song. So I said, fine, let's make a song. So then he came up with some, he came up with some really nice words. He goes, about his wife, it was about Lady Linda, he called it. And it was a very pretty song. And we started real, kind of like dancing in the moonlight. That's how Lady Linda came about. Won't you lie, Lady Linda, with me? Sounds nice, Alan. I mean, it could it be, you know, I mean, we could be on this all night, but I mean, could it be? Oh, well. You'll have to I'll do it and then see how you put you. I mean, it should be more, you know, raspy or, or more mellow, Bing Crosby, James Brown. I mean, what is this supposed to be? That's it sounded it. great just then, so you should just do it. And Bing Crosby. And we 